Three of the largest bank collapses in American history just shook the financial system. And the speed of the failures is terrifying. When Washington Mutual suffered a bank run back in 08, depositors withdrew $16 billion over 10 days. When Silicon Valley Bank failed this month, depositors withdrew $42 billion over just 10 hours. That's over a million dollars a second. But before we talk about why, let's at least give credit to one of those banks for predicting their own collapse in one of the cringiest corporate videos of all time. What possible fate will become of our bank other than to diminish and fail? I happen to know for a fact that won't happen. The collapse of three banks right after another rocked the global financial system. One of those banks, Silvergate, shut itself down, while the other two, Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, were taken over by the government, amidst fears that any bank that starts with the letter S could fall next. But it's important to know why each of these banks failed, because they all have slightly different stories and teach us slightly different lessons, including the fact that despite what the government wants you to think, crypto isn't really to blame. One of the topics, or at least one of the, the, the focuses of the last few days was the cryptocurrency industry, which did a lot of business with the banks in question. Now, it is true that Silvergate had been an important banking partner of the crypto industry, banking firms like Coinbase, Circle, Bitstamp, and hundreds of others. It also ran the Silvergate Exchange Network, an easy way to turn lots of dollars into lots of crypto. But what took it down, and Silicon Valley Bank, and Signature after it, wasn't actually crypto, but panic and maybe good old-fashioned dumb risk management. But it's important to explain this bit because it makes this banking crisis very different from 2008. And yet somehow, it's still very similar because no one saw it coming. Even CNBC's Jim Cramer was telling people to buy a Silicon Valley Bank stock just a month before it collapsed. Being a banker to these invest, immense pools of capital has always been a very good business. Stock's still cheap. Silicon Valley Bank Santa Clara was closed today. We won't go too deep, but all you really need to know is how banks usually make money. They take in deposits and make money on those deposits. Usually, the safest way to do that is just to buy government bonds. Buy a long-term bond earning 3% interest and hold it while paying customers 1% on their deposits. You're pocketing that 2% difference and all is Gucci. But even that can backfire if interest rates start to change. For example, why would anyone want to buy your dusty ass old 10-year bond that's paying 3% when a new 10-year bond is getting sold at a 5% interest rate? And that's exactly what's been happening since the pandemic. The Fed has been raising interest rates at the fastest pace in over 35 years. And the value of all those old bonds banks were sitting on went down. Now that by itself isn't a problem but it can become a huge one if all of a sudden, all of your customers show up at once demanding their deposits back at the same time, and you're forced to sell those bonds at a loss. So for Silicon Valley Bank, they may have been in trouble, but they were still Gucci as long as no one noticed. So you know, maybe keep things hush-hush so as to not set off a panic. The bank, you know, frankly, a bit carelessly communicated a few days ago that it would have to support some of its asset base uh, and sell off some of its assets that are uh, now under the, uh, the price that they have paid for these assets. All right, that's okay, that's okay. As long as your depositors aren't all friends and concentrated in the same circles, maybe word won't spread so quickly and the panic won't spill over into a full-blown crisis. The problem is that the bank is hopelessly overexposed. Uh, on cash from all of these entrepreneurs, right? 96% of all of its asset base, I believe, or some such thing is, uh, is based on cash from startups. All right, so yeah, everyone in Silicon Valley freaked out and demanded their money back all at once. Venture capitalist Peter Thiel told all of his companies in his portfolio to get out, and everyone else followed, freaking out about the bank collapse and begging the government to fix the crisis they caused by freaking out. After all, cascading panic from tech bros on Twitter wasn't really something that existed back in 2008. So the government stepped in, took over Silicon Valley Bank, and guaranteed everyone's deposits, even above the $250,000 FDIC threshold. But the lesson was kind of the same. Silvergate had panicked depositors concentrated in crypto and closed its own doors to save them. SVB had panicked depositors concentrated in startups, and bank regulators closed its doors to save them. But what about Signature? 
the other largest banking failure since 2008. It was shut down with almost no warning. One of Signature's board members, Barney Frank, aka the guy who helped write the Dodd-Frank banking regulation bill after the Great Recession, said there were no immediate insolvency issues. He even went as far as claiming regulators wanted to send a very strong anti-crypto message by shuttering his bank. In fact, since being taken over by the government, reports have spotlighted that Signature was being investigated by the Department of Justice for banking crypto companies and maybe not being as stringent with policing those transactions. But personally, I think there are much more pressing crimes, like making this. If we only knew what the future holds after 2008, we could be real bold. Uh, it's, just, it's just so bad. Anyways, Signature didn't just offer pitchy vocals and terrible lip syncing, though. It also ran a payments network called Signet that, like Silvergate's network, let commercial clients turn lots of dollars into lots of crypto. And Signet still seems to be operating, but who knows how long it'll last. Circle CEO Jeremy Allaire has already abandoned the network. So now, with Silvergate's network shut down and Signature's network on the ropes, crypto companies don't have many friends in the banking industry. Some are even claiming that there's basically nobody left to bank crypto companies in the U.S. And Reuters is reporting that domestic crypto companies are looking for banking partners abroad, like Swiss banks. Maybe not Credit Suisse, though. So where does crypto go from here? Well, up, apparently. Bitcoin was born out of the banking collapses in 2008. And its price soared back then without needing banking partners here in the U.S. With its price popping again, as people turn to it as an alternative to more bank bailouts, it could be reenacting its origin story. As long as our lights are on, though, we'll keep reporting. I'm Zach Usman. This was Coinage. Like and subscribe if you learned something. And remember, stay safe out there. Play us out, Signature Squad! Oh, you wouldn't believe this most amazing bag that came from